but forgiven. Yeah, lot of times in our lives, we don't deserve a lot of things, but because of God's love, we don't deserve it. We have done, I mean, if you count your sins, I don't think you can count also because I'm sure you might have forgotten many of the things, many of the sins. You know, you every day sit down and then you pray and ask God to forgive you every day, every day, every day. This is exactly what happened. You know, uh, recently uh, I saw a video on uh, the social media where one boy and one girl, small kids, they are praying and praying about the virus, the corona. They are, I mean, crying, Lord Jesus, take away corona. And they were literally in tears, these small two children. I guess it was a family prayer and someone was recording. And uh, please forgive us, Lord. Please forgive us, Lord. All that was going on. And uh, the same situation, God, you know, when Peter comes to Jesus and then uh, there's a question that was put to Jesus in Matthew 18, uh, verse 21. Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times will my brother sin against me? And I forgive him and let it go. Up to seven times, Jesus answered him, verse 22. I say to you, not up to seven times, but 70 times seven. Wow. See this? Even in our lives, we are not deserving God's forgiveness. So the issues in life, we, we come every day in our lives. There are so many people that are always hurting us. They're always offending us. And, uh, and same thing happened with Peter, with a lot of disciples. I'm sure, you know, when what, whatever Jesus was doing, many people were getting offended. And uh, God, God said, you know, how many times, how many times Peter was asking? I'm sure a lot of other people were also asking about it. But Jesus said, you know, not just seven times. I'm sure they might thought, you know, if I say seven times, it's a great, perfect number. Seven represents for perfection. But, uh, you know, they thought uh, if I go with a great answer also to Jesus, it's, uh, you know, Jesus will be very impressed. And he says, you know, Lord, all these people are offending me. How many times shall I forgive them? Seven times? Jesus says, no, Peter. And to all of them, 70 times seven in other words, in that culture, that 70 times 7, you don't multiply it. You know, times means in, in our culture, it's multiplication. No, Jesus was simply saying all of them understood that particular phrase in the uh, Hebrew culture. Jesus simply said 7 times? No, 7 into 70. Unending times, that's what it meant to all of them. And they didn't understand because the Jewish law was if someone offends you, if someone hurts you, if someone damages you or, uh, you know, something happened, accident or uh, enmity, you take revenge. That was, you know, it was written in the Levitical, Levitical laws. And uh, God gave those commandments, tooth for tooth and eye for an eye, hand for a hand, leg for a leg. And uh, so uh, these guys were asking Jesus. But Jesus said, no, you know, I have come so that people would be loved. I have come to give love to people. So people are undeserving. Yes, but you forgive them. That is what is happening in this uh, chapter of Matthew 18, 21. Verse 22, you know, we do not deserve it. But he's saying all the time, all the time, forgive people. Yes, people, people abuse you, people take advantage of you and people, you know, are always there to treat you bad. Can you imagine? We also did the same thing. We don't deserve God's forgiveness. But, you know, we say, God, by your grace, we are forgiven. You are forgiven of all sins. But when it comes to forgiving your brother, Forgiving a church member, forgiving your wife, forgiving your husband, your children, your father, your mother. People carry that unforgiveness 
all of their lives i have seen people have that unforgiveness for 20 30 years i mean any topic something comes and they have so much bitterness it goes on for 20 30 years and if jesus if god says i'm going to hold you know and i'm not going to forgive you where will we be so jesus is saying hey guys people don't deserve forgiveness forgiveness will help you if you are not forgiving it go it's going to eat you up from within inside we don't deserve it but jesus is saying i have given you everything all total every sin of yours past present future everything i wiped it away and how much more do you need to love do you need to forgive your brothers and sisters in the lord specially so here peter is you know was i'm sure they were like how how is this going to happen how are we going to do it yeah and i'm sure you know when jesus a lot of people came to jesus and they said we kept the commandments we followed the commandments and every sabbath we do this and blah 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 and uh, jesus you know many times he we see the rich man how they have they had to just go away they put their heads down and went away and uh, even whether people living people dead how many times how many times have we broke have we broken the 10 commandments yeah moses broke all the 10 commandments the first time when he when it was given to him he broke it you know the slabs i'm talking about the slabs what jesus gave and he just destroyed them the first time and then god gives him the second time so all of us have broken the commandments of jesus one way or the other living or dead there is there is nobody you know sin is sin there is no great sin small sin partial sin sin you whether you disobey one time you disobey 100 times sin is sin and we all have a fallen short of the glory of god we all deserve the glory but we have fallen short of it so god is saying you forgive them you forgive them and love them luke uh, 47 we see jesus is saying therefore i say to you that uh, the sins which are many are forgiven for she loved much but he who is forgiven little loves little yes all of us if we really meditate this scripture if we think about this scripture if you count all your sins god has forgiven us much many 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 sins of our lives god has forgiven so god is saying that whoever realizes what kind of sinner he was and if he recognizes or she recognizes then that much love overflows people that are forgiven that's what Jesus talk, is talking about, Luke 7.47. God has removed every curse, every evil, every kind of uh, punishment that we were supposed to go through. Jesus removed it all. Brothers and sisters, you might be thinking, my sins cannot be forgiven. Jesus took it all on the cross. You don't carry it all your life. That is destroying you. From within inside, it's destroying you. Yeah. Sinners, you know, there are so many sins that we have committed. Jesus talked about, you may be saying, no, 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 I am a perfect guy. I have no sin. I always help people. I always do this. And that's what Jesus said. If you are angry, you don't have to murder anybody. Or you don't have to break anybody's arms. Jesus said, if you are angry, it's like committing murder. It's murder. That's what Jesus said. Jesus came to fulfill the law. Uh, Jesus was making the nuts and bolts tighter on the law. First of all, the, to keep the law itself was so tough. Jesus comes and says, hey, you want to keep the law? Here, I'm going to tell you. No, 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 no. Not just killing a person. 
not just uh, breaking someone's arm, not just fighting with each other and breaking someone's leg. I am saying, before you break the leg, before you break the arms, before you kill someone, the thought that you have, the angry thought itself is murder. Jesus says, you don't have to go sleep with some man or a woman. You don't even have to travel anywhere. The thought of a lust, a lustful thought that you entertain and keep entertaining, you know, by that you have committed adultery. Jesus made it so strict and so impossible for anybody to keep the law. But Jesus said, I am here to forgive you no matter how much the list, how big the list is. I am there. All your sins are forgiven. All the evil that you have committed, I have removed it. That's what Jesus is talking about. No longer you are a sinner. You know, if you see uh, James chapter 2, verse 10, where uh, Jesus talks about uh, whoever keeps the law, the whole law, but stumbles even in one point, he has become guilty of breaking all the law. You know, amplified version puts it very well. So you may be thinking, I'm this perfect guy, I've, I'm, I give to the poor, I go to the church and I sweep the church and voluntary at the church and uh, all kinds of things. But lust, anger, jealousy, revenge, all these things. But Jesus is saying, I am, I am with you. No matter what your sin is, no matter what you are going through, I am there to help you and forgive you. Yeah, your goodness, your greatness, your charity doesn't help. We are sinners from birth. That's where James 2.10 talks about. Even one point, one little sin, you have committed all, every commandment is gone. That is where, brothers and sisters, Jesus comes into the picture. Jesus says, you know, if you believe me as your personal savior, you are no longer a sinner. If you have Jesus in your life, 2 Corinthians uh, 5.17, you know, Jesus says there, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in. If you are in Christ, you are grafted. Remember the hybrid trees, you know, we graft them. If you are in Christ, if you know Jesus as your personal savior, you're grafted, joined to him by faith. There's no supernatural, no magic happening. It is by faith in Jesus, in the savior. He is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. And all things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, all things have become spiritual. Awakening brings a new life. All things have become new. Behold, new things have come. Because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Brothers, your goodness, your love, your mercy, nothing helps. You may be thinking that I am this, I am that and all, but you, whatever it is, undeserving, God, you do not deserve anything in life. The Christ, the Messiah, the God came and he has cleaned your slate and he's given you new life. He's given you that new hope. And, uh, you know, God is saying that I'm going to give you a life where you will never be the same. Yeah, he's cleaned your slate. God is loving you. God is forgiving you. God is always with you. He's never left you. He's never forsaken you. He's removed the entire huge debt. You know, if you see, you were holding, you were uh, oppressed, you were heavy with huge debt. You know, you were supposed to be paying, but Jesus came and removed the entire debt. Brothers and sisters, if you have wronged someone, remember, 
If anyone wronged you or you wronged someone, forgive them. Yes, you did not deserve anybody's forgiveness. Exactly. But people forgave you. Jesus forgave you. So forgive people. Forgiveness is very, very important in our lives. You may be thinking, you know, uh, why am I not being healed of this sickness? Brothers, if you choose unforgiveness, if you be bitter in your life, you will be sick. God has not designed your body to have bitterness, jealousy, anger, wrath, lust, adultery and all these kind of things. Body is not designed for that. That's why you get sickness. So if you have problems in your body, if you have some kind of sickness, think about these things. Unforgiveness is the most important thing in life that... Uh, uh, you have to think about, you have to remove it. So make sure if you choose bitterness only, you will only suffer. You will only have no peace, no health. Remember Matthew chapter 6 verses 12 to 15, Jesus talks about the Lord's Prayer. Every day we all pray the Lord's Prayer or at least think about it once or twice. And you know, we, we talk about forgiving. Verse 14 if you forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, nurturing your hurt and anger with the result that is inter that it interferes with your relationship with God, then your father will also not forgive your trespasses. It, it interferes whatever you are praying. You're, you need to be healed. The unforgiveness is the interference for your healing. The unforgiveness is the interference in your prosperity, in your success, in your marriage. All the evil things that are happening is you look into it. Unforgiveness is a wide door of the, for the devil to enter into and destroy your life, your family, your jobs, anything. Brothers and sisters, forgiveness, forgive today. Imagine how much God has forgiven you. So have that mind, the mind of Christ. Forgive people, just let it go. I mean, it's, it's no use to win an argument and lose your wife or your friend. It doesn't matter, just give it up, bow down, let it go. Let your brother feel he's one even though he's wrong. And you are right. Just leave it. Let it go. Forgiveness. Remember, you don't deserve forgiveness. Jesus forgave you the multitudes of sins. Walk in that forgiveness. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, help my beloved brother and sister to forgive, to love, to release that forgiveness. Remove that bitterness, jealousy, wrath, anger, lust. Remove it, Father. Fill them with the agape, overflowing love in their lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you, brothers. And I look forward to hearing from you. Write to me and I would love to pray for you and for your family. God bless you.